How about that? We're lucky we get a hummingbird. I don't know. I don't view him as being anybody different than you or me. He just has a just limited in what he can do. Scotty's one of the most easygoing people you'll ever know. Crack you. Or me. <laughs> open it up, Rip. Come on. Open it up. Open it up. Come on. You can open it. Open the open the gate. Come on. You can open it. You know you're not supposed to, don't you? Come on. Open the gate. Come on. C5, quad, incomplete. I got hurt in 1980 racing motocross. I worked with Georgia Power, but on Sundays we'd race. And I went over a jump, and I broke my neck. All pads and everything. And I had a good job, I had no business doing it. I didn't bang up, and I was about ready to quit anyway. But me and my girlfriend, best friend, got a little track on the Alabama line, and I went over the jump. And, uh, you know, you don't hesitate on things anyway. But I already looked at the jumps and thought, oh, they don't look good. You know what I'm talking about? So I let a guy come by me. I hesitate. So hit it wide open like you used to do. So when I hit it, it throwed me. You know, I don't know if I, I just pushed the ditches up on the other side. And uh, so I don't know if I tell him my bike caught the ditch or if I just went over it slow. My bike flipped. And it, I had concussions from football and stuff. And racing, I got one pretty easy. It throwed me in a set position. Just like this. You know what I'm talking about? I named my kids after Scott and Chris, my son, because that's how much I looked up to him. That's what I'm calling Chris. He said, that sounds familiar. I said, remember a long time ago, buddy, I told you, I said, I'm going to name my first boy after you and Chris. And I didn't know about the motorcycle wreck. That's not why I named my son after him. It's just because I looked up to him and he, he was our leader, like Tim Tebow, I guess. I mean, anything, he just picked it up like that, like motocross, baseball, football. He was our quarterback and leader. I thought a bunch of touchdown passes, so we went undefeated and beat the All-Stars. 11 won a sportsmanship trophy, I guess some bragging. Good place to grow up, always football, or basketball, or baseball, you know what I'm talking about? Just always love to play sports. The thing about Scotty, man, he's gotta be a brilliant, he's gotta be a genius because he can't leave the house without having everything meticulously planned down to the weather. And back up the weather is very important. He can't get caught out in a damn lightning storm wheel here or hail storm. We had some hail storms here, man, and make you say hail. If he got caught over here, man, like that, man, he got beat to death. Yeah. You know, just one of those sudden hailstorms. Yeah, he has to know the weather, man. He has to know everything. Everything. He's got to know everything to, to leave the house, even. Oh, no, you're good. Yeah, well, yeah, there you go. All right, I'll cut it back the other way. Thirty-one years in a chair, thirty-one years to have to be relying on somebody else to take care of you for your every need and things that we take for granted every morning like setting an alarm when it goes off, turning off that alarm, getting up, you know, most of those decisions on what he does every day or, you know, that's made, that's all made by somebody else or dictated by his circumstance. People take his shit. Uh, it's happened too many times for it not to be true at some point. But money, man, I can't believe people think it's money. I got to unzip Scotty's pouch and pay the city for his water. And I feel good. I did something good for the day, and that karma's going to take me through life for a, at least for a week or two, right? You're not, you're not doing it because you want the good buy back. It's just that, hey, man, maybe that'll come back to me. Okay, meanwhile, they come here and unzip his damn backpack. And, and under the pretense of altruism, they know they can pay his thing right there, but they also know they're gonna get a little sticky fingered, man. They grab a pill or two or whatever. The things that he needs to sustain his life, keep him having seizures and shit. 
these guys are gonna pluck pills and they'll grind them up and snort them or whatever, and and and, and take his money. Three times a day, I have to take my pills: blood pressure, heart pills, and the pills from my spasm keep me from shaking so bad. I've done this for 32 years. Don't take any extra drugs. I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke dope. I don't have nothing against what somebody else does. And I don't do no drugs. Most people don't realize how stressful a life that that can be on you. Just having the, the routine, you have to go through the mornings to get up. It just make that effort to get your ass up out of bed. And if you don't do nothing but just ride around and talk to people, your life is a lot better. And most people would not give up. And call it quits. And just lay in the bed out there. How about medium well? Salt? Yeah, medium well or a little more? I could feel any light touch, but I sharpened oil foos me and hot and cold foos me. Any light touch I could feel, that's strange. And, uh, but sexually, everything was the same, nothing's changed as far as that goes. That's weird, but uh, sensation is, uh, you have to where it's sharp from the oil and backing up against heaters, heat will fool you. Really, no holes bar. He'll tell it like it is, because I think a lot of times he knows people have questions that, that they want to ask of him, but they don't you know, for whatever reason. But, you know, he's glad to talk about things. We've talked about, we've talked about a lot of personal things, you know, and uh, he has no problem sharing. All places should be accessible for wheelchairs. I have begged them and begged them for about a year, and Andy, to put up a ramp. They, Pakistanians, they make plenty of money. They want to use $5 for some cement. So I hop up in the grease, and dandy. It pops me to the left. I crept back to the right. My toe barely catches garbage can. Pop. Never broke a bone, but my neck when I broke and paralyzed me. And it breaks my foot. Bothers me every night and rolls up on me. I feel like when I went to uh, Atlanta for an uh, electrode implant, Coming back to Rockmark was my biggest mistake. You got that van. I mean, we can take you anywhere you want to go. Do you want to go back to the city? The city wasn't quiet as woolly. See, the shepherds hadn't built on a new part. The new part had moved right there on Peach Tree. And so the, all the new Olympic-sized pool and all just been built. So you got to go out all the time. It wasn't quite as woolly and as mean. 1984, a buddy of mine, I got where I could just barely push a manual wheelchair. And a buddy of mine, Phil Griggs, got me on a Shepherd's wheelchair team, track team. So we'd go to different universities. So I was in A1 class, lowest class. But we'd go to Florida, East, East Tennessee State, uh, Atlanta, all over the place and push wheelchairs. I got where I could push up to five miles a day. And I've got medals from all over. And from pushing track, I got doing photography work, taking pictures of the kids at the ball field. I'd go back over there and sell those and done it as for a hobby, because I always played sports. But I didn't try to make a bunch of money. I just made my money back and enjoyed that. You know, did what he could do, man. And he's doing, hell yeah, he's just cool pictures. He's working his ass off. I always try to do everything to his best. I always give that little extra oomph. Mm. Old tracks, they rough. Hit them out of angle. Ain't so bad. What I'm talking about? Angle. Took a ball out of my hip. Put it in my neck. But Humpty Dumpty back together again. He's an old hippie, this new life is just a bust. He ain't trying to change nobody, he's just trying real hard to adjust. He was
was sure back in the 60s that everyone was hip.